Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a good day out there. Uh, really excited to bring you guys a brand new mini series on how to build out one of these walkthrough slash onboarding components that you find in a lot of uh, applications in the App Store today. So I wanted to go through how to build audible.com's walkthrough component on how they want you to share their Audible tracks. So before we type out any code, I'm gonna show you guys a very quick demo on exactly what that looks like. So the very first page of the, uh, the walkthrough or their guide is kind of their splash screen that uh, has a very interesting graphic on the top. As you swipe through each one of these pages, you'll notice that it goes uh, from page to page, obviously, and the control on the bottom, which is called a UI page control, has these four dots, and it kind of corresponds to exactly the, the right page that you are on. And the very last page is something I added into the app uh, myself to make it a little more interesting. And as you swipe to the last page, you'll kind of get to this login screen where you can start typing in some things, and then uh, the keyboard kind of goes away as you kind of swipe the screen away like that. And the more interesting part is the skip next and UI page control components. Uh, as soon as you swipe and you end the dragging phase of the collection view, uh, you'll notice that the components slide up away and down away from the entire screen. So that's pretty interesting. And this is something that I've built out for my other production applications. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to build out this, uh, this walkthrough onboarding screen. And uh, before we kind of get into Xcode and type out our very first line of code, uh, I wanna tell you that before you can build out an application or a component such as this, you kind of have to break down the, uh, the component into a couple of more easier phases to kind of build out first. Now, the first of which is this application here. And all this is, uh, is four cells inside of one collection view component. And the collection view has a property on it called paging enabled that allows me to kind of swipe from cell to cell and then it snaps right in the center right there. So in today's video, we're not going to be able to build out this entire app, but instead we are going to aim for this application right here. Uh, hopefully this will be less daunting of a task for you guys to kind of build out. All right, I'm gonna go to Xcode here. Uh, let's see, Xcode. And I'm gonna hit Command, Shift N, I believe is the shortcut key to create a new application. First thing I will do is to create this new Audible application right here. And uh, change the simulator to iPhone 6S, run the application to make sure I get a nice white screen inside of the simulator. Cool. So this is what we get, and this is a very, very good starting point for us to actually implement our very first collection view inside of our view controller. Now, typically you probably want to rename this guy, but I don't really feel like it. So let's just keep it as view controller. And for some of you guys that are kind of used to using the storyboard, well, today we are not going to be using storyboards because I personally find it pretty clunky to click down here, type some stuff here, and then play around with these buttons down here that are pretty confusing to explain. And it's much easier to actually type all of this stuff in code. At least that's my personal preference, but uh, that's just me. Anyhow, I want to include a collection view inside of my controller. And this collection view pretty much has four cells like this. And uh, in order to add a collection view inside of view controller, it's pretty easy if you just say let collection view be of type UI collection view, and you create it inside of this closure right here. And to create a collection view, you need to specify UI collection view with a frame and collection view layout. The frame is dot zero, which is a zero frame. The layout is this layout I'll create up here, UI collection view flow layout, just create it with an empty constructor specify the layout right here, and return this CV component. So what this means is that this entire closure executes and returns this collection view, setting it equal to collection view right here. Now we can go into view to load and type view, uh, add sub view, 
collection view. And before the actual collection view will render inside the collection, uh, inside of the UI view controller's view, you need to specify the collection views frame like this. And I'll just use the frame of the entire view and run the application. You'll see it render as, I think, a black screen. I'll tell you why this is kind of bad to use the frames in just a bit. Okay, so it's black. And to make it a little bit more interesting, I will use a background color of dot red color. And our collection view will now be red. This is how you know that your collection view is actually being rendered inside of your view controller. So there you go, nothing too special. It doesn't have any cells yet. And so why is this frame line right here not the right thing to do? Um, so the thing is, if I take the simulator and I hit command right and command left right here, this simulates a rotation of your iPhone. And as soon as you rotate it, it kind of, uh, it doesn't actually lay out the collection view to be anchored on the left, right, top, and bottom uh, as you would expect it to inside of a operating uh, device. So how do we fix this issue? Well, the approach that we'll take is to use auto layout. So use auto layout instead. And we're going to anchor the collection view to the top left, right, and bottom to fix this issue of this frame. Now, some of you guys have been following me for quite a while now you know how to use these anchors properly. So I'm going to make this a lot faster and easier by creating this extension on UI view. And I'm going to include a couple of helper functions that I have in another project down here. So I'm just going to copy and paste it in here. And these couple of functions just allow me to anchor things onto the, uh, the view controller's view a lot easier. So instead of this frame guy, I'm just going to delete it. And I'm going to say collection view dot anchor to top right here. And this is a lot easier because I can just say view top, view left, and view bottom, let's see bottom, view right anchor, like so. So running this now, um, we're going to get the collection view to be anchored on the right, let's see right, left, top, and bottom, like that. So that's what that one line of anchoring does for us. And for those of you guys that haven't um, actually used these anchor constraints before, this is basically just executing this one line right here. Question view, uh, top anchor, constraint to anchor, view dot top anchor, and active equals true. So this line right here is being executed four times for each one of these anchors. And uh, we're actually activating all of these constraints to true from within this actual anchor call. So it saves us a lot of time and makes things a lot easier to read as well. So that's how you would get a collection view to be fully clamped to the left, right, top, and bottom. Now I want to move on to how we can render out some individual cells inside of our collection view so that we can later put these image views inside of these cells. So the first thing to do is to actually specify the view controller as your data source for your collection view here. And you can do that by saying collection view data source equals self, collection views delegate equals self. Those are the two properties you need to set. And self right here um, actually needs to be lazy var in order to access self from within this closure block. And the self actually needs to conform to the collection view data source and UI collection view delegate like that. And everything should be fine. So now that we've conformed to these two protocols right here, uh, while I'm here, I might as well conform to UI delegate flow layout as well. So I can specify some sizes later. So to fix this compiler warning, we need to uh, let's see. Uh, implement this function called number of items in section and return just four for four pages. And then the other method to implement is self for item at index path right here. Okay, so why don't I remove the file explorer? Here we go. The first thing to do is to say let cell equals collection view dq. 
And we need to dequeue some kind of cell from the collection view with this index path from here. Let's place that guy there. And let's return this cell. And the problem right now is that we can't dequeue a cell yet because we haven't registered one with a cell identifier. So why don't I just register one really quickly right here. So cell ID. And I need to register with collection view inside of this view did load function here, collection view, register class with this uh, cell ID from above. And this class, I'm going to use a UI collection view cell dot self right there. And let's see, cell ID. If I run this, I don't know if I'm going to get anything in my view just yet. So it all looks red. And the reason for that is because these four individual cells need a background color of something. Let's see, equals dot black color. And by doing this, the cells will actually render with a color inside of the collection view. So now it's black. And what you kind of want to do is to just use uh, perhaps a white, white color like that. Okay, so that's how you would get individual cells. And these four cells, it's pretty much these four cells that you see inside of this collection view right here. And uh, how do I get it so that it's uh, the individual cell is as big as the entire uh, application's view? So that's the first thing I want to tackle here. And down here, if I say size for item at index path, this method, I can just see return CG size of let's see width view frame width view frame height and run the application. Each one of these individual cells will uh, will be the entire height and width of the application. So if I scroll down, uh, now our cells are white and each one of these cells are pretty much the size of the entire device. So to make it horizontally scrollable is pretty easy as well. Uh, we want to go up to the collection view that we're creating programmatically. And for the layout, we'll say scroll direction equals horizontal. And that will allow the, uh, the layout of the collection view to flow left to right instead like this. So that's what you get with dot horizontal. You see the scroll bar at the bottom. And to make it kind of snap, you want to say uh, cv.paging enabled equals true. So paging is the idea of each one of your cells being one page. Hence, you get behavior like this. So it kind of snaps in place, right? And the reason why it is kind of goofy like this right now is because we need to specify the layout uh, minimum line spacing equals zero. And for each one of these cells, you have a gap between them and specifying zero just makes it do nothing. So you notice that the gap is all gone. A scroll bar at the very bottom is kind of telling us that the actual collection view is being scrolled. You just can't really tell because there's no uh, visual indicator right now. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, let's move on to placing a image or an image inside of each one of these cells so that you can kind of scroll through it like this, right? And how are we going to do that inside of our application? The trick is to actually, instead of registering a class of UI collection view cell, so this is a default cell that UI kit comes with. All we have to do is uh, make a subclass of this collection view cell. So I'm going to create a new file. So it's file and I'm just going to call it page cell for each one of these pages inside of our uh, onboarding slash walkthrough component. Let's import UI kit. And here I'm going to say class page cell UI collection view cell. Okay. So in here, you actually have to override this init frame method call super init frame. And I'm going to fix the compiler error right here by clicking that and that. So uh, I'm going to call a function called setup views, which I'll create down here. And in here is where I will actually create that image view that you see whenever I swipe the collection view. So 
first thing I want to do is to just say background color equals, let's say, uh, blue color just to make sure these cells show up inside of my collection view. Okay, so let's see, instead of UI collection view cell, I'll use page cell dot self, run the application. And I think this white color will actually override the blue color here. So I will quickly or quickly remove this white color line. And uh, this page cell set of views will be called every time a cell is being dequeued. So how this works is collection view dequeues the cell, calls init frame, and then it calls a set of views, which turns the cell into this blue color right here. So that's how you would get all of your cells to render as uh, blue. And now the final step that we're missing is to actually just plop a, a, an image, image view component inside of each one of these cells. Okay, so to do that, we will go inside of page cell up here, we'll say let image view be of type image view like so. Let IV equals UI image view. Image view. I want to set this thing called content mode equals scale aspect fill. And perhaps I'll show you what happens when you don't set that property as well. So I'm going to comment that out. Execute this closure right here, and we should be okay. So do 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 IV dot background color equals uh, let's say yellow color, like so. Okay, now that we have this image view inside of our page cell class, we can use this reference to simply say add sub view image view, gets the image view inside of the cell, and we need to place it so that you can actually see it. In other words, I want to uh, anchor the left, top, right, and bottom to the entire cell's edge. And to very easily do that, again, we just call it anchor to top like this. And we'll say top anchor, left anchor, bottom anchor, and right anchor. That'll give me the entire uh, width and height of the cell. So running this, we'll see a yellow cell in each one of our uh, cells or a yellow image view inside of each one of these cells. And the final the final final step is to go inside of assets right here. I'm going to drag in this image, which I'm going to just call page one. And this image looks like that. Uh, you can't really see the whole thing inside of your video player, but it's just the image that is this guy right here. So now that we have this page one image asset, we want to simply set IV.image equals UI image. See UI image named uh, page one, I believe, and run the application. And you should be uh, pretty good with what the image needs to be. And that's what it is. So if you swipe between each of you right now, you get this kind of squished image. And if you turn on scale aspect fill, that will allow the image to scale itself properly, maintaining the aspect ratio, but it actually will cause this effect where the image lands outside of the cell right there, which is what you're seeing uh, as the image or as the cell pages from one cell to the next. You can fix this issue if you really care to do so. Uh, so I'm just going to remove this blue color here. If you just call, let's see, a layer dot, is it layer? No, I think you don't even need the layer call. You can just say IV dot clips to bounds equals true. And then I'll remove the clipping uh, of the image that is being shown on top of the other images. So that's how you would kind of get this entire controller working so that you have uh, four cells, one of which represents each one of your pages for your, your walkthrough slash onboarding component. And uh, the idea is you want to transform this into this component by introducing a text view on the bottom a couple of buttons on the top, a page controller uh, at the very bottom indicating each page, and you should be good to go. Okay, that about wraps it up for today's video. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video. Also, to subscribe to the channel if you want more videos just like this. Also, if you want to download the project for today's video, please visit the link down in the description below. Download it, play around with the code, see what works and what doesn't. 
And that's it for today, guys. Bye.